Americans. This is another speaker game. When you know who this is, would you raise your hand? This guy's born in 1930 well, well enough for him to say, what if I went door to door, no air conditioning in 1930, if I went door to door and sold Coca-Cola's ice cold, made a penny or two on a bottle. I was at six. At nine, someone told him that rich people play golf and when they hit the ball in the water, they hit the ball in the woods, they don't even bother to go get the ball. They drop another ball. If you went in and collect those balls, you can sell them to the caddies who sell them to the players. You can sell them to the pros. So at nine, he starts collecting balls and inside of 40 days, he has a deal set up with the pro shack to buy as many of the balls. He's not collecting the balls anymore. He's nine years old. There's five kids working for him. They get half the money, so he's fair with them. And he's got this constant stream of income coming in. He turns his attention. You all know this person now. I guarantee you, you all know this person. At the age of 10, he overhears a conversation an older guy saying, the guy tore up a winning ticket at the racetrack and threw it away. It was just, he swore he left before the race finished and he walked down. He says, and I think a lot of people do that. Well, this nine-year-old kid investigated. He went to the racetrack and slipped in under the turnstile. He collected these masses of torn up tickets and sure enough, he never worked a day when he didn't find winning tickets that people had torn up and thrown away. He's nine years old. No. Uh, I hope I'm not boring any of you because you all know this person. He took the profits from the golf ball business and the racetrack business and at the age of 11 he bought six shares of stock. But he didn't buy the shares of stock the way uh, he knows. One guy in here knows who it is. He bought six shares of stock for one reason. Not so the stock would appreciate, so that he could get the feeling of buying stock and following a stock chart. He went back to the racetrack and he sold stock tip sheets called, called Stable Boy Selections. But there were stock selections. He didn't charge much per sheet, but he got an income from that. Now, at the age of 12, he has his only experience with conventional money earning for a kid. He becomes a stock clerk in a grocery store, and that's all he needed to know, that you don't do work like that if you want to get ahead. At age 13, he ran away from home. You, you're going to be very surprised that you know this person very well. It's probably not a day of your life goes by you don't hear this guy's name if you read a lot. He goes to Washington, D.C. Uh, he's 13 years old. By the time he's 15, he's a newspaper boy delivering 1,500 papers a day. Now, I was a newspaper boy delivering about 80, and I had a heavy route. 1,500 papers a day, how do you do that? He worked out a deal with the, uh, you know, whoever the booker is, to only give him huge apartment buildings and to deliver the papers to the top floor of the apartment building. Then he ran down at breakneck speed, throwing the papers, go to the next building, up, down. 1,500 papers a day. Uh, that was earning him in 1945 $175 a month, which is the equivalent, not of a fortune, but of about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a year. He was 15. He took his profits and he bought 40 acres of farmland, good farmland with the profits, and then he rented it out to a tenant farmer. Now he had a stream of revenue coming in from the golf ball business, a stream of revenue coming in from the tenant farmer business, and of course a stream of revenue coming in from the newspaper delivery business. 
But at 16, he made his big breakthrough. He found out by accident that pinball machines were available to be rented from big distributors. And he also, from going to barber shops, knew that in those days, a whole lot, because I was part of that culture, a whole lot of people would sit around and chat in the barber shop while the barber was cutting one hair. And all these guys are sitting around. And he said, is it possible that I could bring a pinball machine to a barber shop, split the money 50-50, I do the work and risk my capital, and the barber gets half the money, and that it would pay off. Well, it paid off instantly. And inside of six weeks, he had a route of 45 pinball machines to service. Obviously, 15-year-old boy, 16-year-old boy can't do that, but he hired people to drive the truck, to do the pickups, and so on. We're almost at the end of this, and then I'll tell you who he was. He was earning $50 a week takeout from the pinball machine business, uh, 175 a month, so that makes 375 a month from, from the newspaper delivery business. I think he was earning 30 or 40 a week from the golf ball business, and he was earning about 500 a year from renting his acreage uh, to a tenant farmer. So when he arrived at, at the age of 17, he had $10,000 capital, it was 1947, it's about what 100 grand is today. He applied to the Wharton Business School and they turned him down. Then he applied to the Harvard Business School and they turned him down. <laughs> oh my, and so neither of those places ever got an endowment from Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, Omaha, Nebraska. Now, did Warren Buffett do anything that you or I couldn't have done? No. Did he preempt the whole market of doing that? I don't think so.